Hello, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to the Lit Professor's Reading Room. So today we're going to read uh, Maya Angelou's New Directions. It is a narrative essay. It is very short. And let's get started. I'm going to share my screen so you guys can see it. All right. So in 1903, the late Mrs. Annie Johnson of Arkansas found herself with two toddling sons, very little money, a slight ability to read and add simple numbers. To this picture, add a disastrous marriage and the burdensome fact that Mrs. Johnson was a Negro. When she told her husband, Mr. William Johnson, of her dissatisfaction with their marriage, he conceded that he too found it to be less than he expected and had been secretly hoping to leave and study religion. He added that he thought God was calling him not only to preach, but to do so in Enid, Oklahoma. He did not tell her that he knew a minister in Enid with whom he could study and who had a friendly unmarried daughter. They parted amicably, Annie keeping the one-room house and William taking most of the money or cash to carry himself to Oklahoma. Madison. Annie, over six feet tall, big bone, decided that she would not go to work as a domestic and leave her precious babe to anyone else's care. There was no possibility of being hired at the town's cotton gin or lumber mill, but maybe there was a way to make the two factories work for her. In her words, I looked up the road I was going and back the way I come. And since I wasn't satisfied, I decided to step off the road and cut me a new path. She told herself that she wasn't a fancy cook, but that she could mix groceries well enough to scare hunger, hungry away and keep from starving a man. She made her plans meticulously and in secret. One early evening to see if she was ready, she placed stones in two five-gallon pails and carried them three miles to the cotton gin. She rested a little and then discarding some rocks, she walked in the darkness to the sawmill five miles farther along the dirt road. On her way back to her little house and her babies, she dumped the remaining rocks along the path. That same night, she worked into the early hours, boiling chicken and frying ham. She made dough and filled the rolled out pastry with meat. At last, she went to sleep. The next morning, she left her house carrying the meat pies, lard and irons with beer and coals for a fire. Just before the lunch, she appeared in an empty lot behind the cotton gin. As the dinner noon bell rang, she dropped the savers into boiling fat and the aroma rose and floated over to the workers who spilled out of the gin, covered with white lint, looking like specters. Most workers had brought their lunches of pinto beans and biscuits or crackers, onions and cans of sardines, but they were tempted by the hot meat pies, which Annie ladled out of her fat. <laughs> she wrapped them in newspapers, which soaked up the grease and offered them for sale at a nickel each. Although business was slow those first days, Annie was determined. She balanced her appearances between the two hours of activity. So on Monday, she offered fresh, hot, fresh pies of the cotton gin and sold the remaining cooled down pies to the lumber mill for three cents. Then on Tuesday, she went first to the lumber mill lumber mill presenting fresh just with pies as the lumbermen covered in sawdust emerged from the sawmill for the next few years on balmy spring days blistering summer noons and cold wet and wintry middays annie never disappointed her customers who could count on seeing the tall brown-skinned woman bent over her brazier carefully turning the meat pies when she felt certain that the workers had become dependent on her she built a stall between the two hives of industry and let the men run to her for their lunchtime provisions she had indeed stepped from the road which she seemed to have been chosen for her and cut herself a brand new path. In years, that stall became a store where customers could buy cheese, meal, syrup, cookies, candy, writing tablets, pickles, canned goods, fresh fruit, soft drinks, coal, oil, and leather soles for worn out shoes. Each of us has the right and the responsibility to assess the roads which lie ahead and those over which we have traveled. And if the future road looms ominous or unpromising and the roads back uninviting, then we need to gather our resolve and carrying only the necessary baggage, step off that road into another direction. If the new choice is also unpalatable without embarrassment, we must be ready to change that as well. Okay, okay that was my Angelou's narrative essay, New Directions, short, sweet, and to the point. Bye guys.